Hey, I'm on to welcome to another episode of Theological Sidebars, OTXNT, uh, Theological Sidebars. Mine, I just went into my other podcast mode. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. Hi, I'm with Baptist, Baptist on, on the, the Bible. Bible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, uh, today, you know, I know that I just want to time with you. And uh, we have a riveting conversation, one that is uh, super super important it is important it's probably for some people is going to seem uh, a little bit um maybe outside anything that they ever think of what are we talking about today yeah it's a little inside the baptist beltway but we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, cooperation group recommendations for the southern baptist convention meeting and then maybe how that relates into the law amendment but it goes into the broader discussion of where the southern baptist convention is headed so i think that uh, for those don't don't turn away yet okay um because if you're interested in what's happening to the methodists and what's happening outside of the um uh, uh, broader evangelical church this uh this has uh input to that to some degree yeah so um but yeah it, it's going to be a little bit sbc oriented today um but hey that's who we are, um, at least for now. <laughs> well, I'm I am ready to uh, to have that conversation. So let's talk. Let's let's do it. All right. Let's well, let's it. let's pray as the Lord taught us, and then we'll jump jump on in. Uh, please join it. me in the Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. So let, let's start, just kind of tee this up for just a moment. Uh, this whole thing that we're talking about, this cooperation group that uh, that we looked at, this was something that came out of, um, right? It was, the, they say, you know, it was designed to prioritize to, and emphasize the authority of messengers in defining the boundaries of our cooperation while clarifying and refining our structure. So that being said, help me if I'm wrong on this. Like the idea was, and I remember in Anaheim, that this was first thrown out. The idea was that in Baptist faith and message, uh, you know, we, we talk about closely aligned uh, or, or that that a church in good fellowship is one that's closely aligned with the Baptist faith and message, right? And there there was some ambiguity of like what does it mean or closely identify? What does it mean to be closely identified with the Baptist faith and message? Uh, and uh, you know, Rick Warren said that you know for him, you know, he uses the we affirm every ninety nine point nine percent of all the words of. Baptist faith and message, except one. And what he was saying is they're egalitarian, and they right. disagreed with the the Baptist faith and message that it says that it, the offices of pastor is limited to man. Um, and so he, of course, it's it's semantics in in what his game was that he played of like we agree with every word. Cool, I'm gre glad you agree with every word. But that opened up the door to say, okay, well, can you right? And, and this is kind of the, the the beginning point of this, right? If if I understand it correct, that can a Baptist church be closely identify or closely identify with the Baptist faith and message? And is it sufficient for say yes? But I don't agree to this line, you know, in that. And that's kind of where they were like, hey, do we want to maybe reevaluate what that means? Is that is if my is that how I, I interpreted why this all started? Yeah, yeah. So this this is flowing from uh the battle uh, of Saddleback, which of course is the larger battle of um what does it mean to be uh complementarian as a denomination versus egalitarian or patriarchal, and uh what are our uh, commitments to that in terms of uh, defining our fellowship of Southern Baptist churches. And so with the uh, concern about expelling Saddleback, which was not a move of complementarianism of, of having women women pastors, it was really an egalitarian push, like you said. It, it, it was him appointing uh, three women elders. Uh, and then after he retired, uh, the church voting in a, a husband and wife um, co-pastor team and so uh, he was defending himself in Anaheim about, you know, this shouldn't be a reason for us to break fellowship. But, you know, that that means that we now get to have really a kind of a hard disagreement with our confessional document. 
And, and so uh, the, the the troubling troubling thing about this was the credentials committee came out and tried to not expel Saddleback or not recommend expulsion, but rather uh, try to put a team together to determine what the word pastor meant in the yeah. Baptist faith and message. And that was voted down by the messengers. And that threw the kind of threw the platform uh, up. They, they didn't know what to do. And so what they did is they pulled that whole recommendation back and sat on it for a year. In the meantime, Adam Greenway from Southwestern, who was president of Southwestern at the time, proposed that they form maybe a cooperation study group that would look at the idea of what it means to be um, closely aligned in our confessional document. So that was voted down at the time because the messengers were really kind of saying, this isn't a hard issue for us. We want to um, say that Salback has has left the reservation, so to speak. And uh, the it was clear that the, the, the chair, uh, the, the platform, was not in agreement. And so it got kicked down the road uh, for the, the next meeting in St. Louis, or something, sorry, um, uh, Louisiana. <laughs> uh, and so that that's where things broke last year. Uh, well, last year, the surprise uh, to the platform was the law amendment. And we've talked a little bit about the law amendment, but the law amendment was by a pastor named Law who had proposed a change not to the confessional documents, but to take the confessional documents that say a pastor is uh, limited to men as qualified by scripture and add that to the constitution so that this would be a much uh, harder thing to step around. And the, uh, the platform did not want that voted on. But 20,000 pastors, I think, signed on to this or a, yeah. a large number. And so with the pressure, they released it for a vote with a negative assessment saying, messengers, we urge that you do not vote in favor of this amendment. And it was overwhelmingly supported by the messengers after voting um, to disfellowship or to view uh, Saddleback not in friendly cooperation with the SBC. The messengers went on and did the initial vote of bringing the law amendment into the Constitution. And now that has to have a subsequent vote in this coming uh, uh, convention in Indianapolis in order to change the constitution and bylaws. So all of this is the background to this cooperation study group, which uh, I'll kick it back to you to explain uh, what's happening there, because this was viewed as the way of trying to counteract the law amendment. It was voted down under Greenway, but it was brought in a much more uh, forceful way with the support of multiple former presidents uh, from the floor at yeah. the convention in New Orleans. So um, what do you think about that? What What is the uh, cooperation group from well, that? Yeah, so that's where it's interesting. So they just released their recommendations, right? And that's the big thing of like, okay, what are we going to do? And and what is this going to look like? Uh, and when I said just released, this has been out for two weeks now. Um, it, it just kind of working through it. But so, you know, I, I'm actually, as I'm looking through, I you know, I look through this and I see largely speaking, I, mean, I have a few questions of maybe clarity of what it looks like, but uh, it, it does not to not do what what people were kind of fearing, which was maybe a kind of a way to redefine what some of those boundaries were. Um, it 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 actually didn't to me. I mean, as I read this, I don't think it does much uh, at all. Uh, as we kind of walk through it, like it kind of just it, it it makes some good recommendations, some things I think absolutely we need to do. Um, but there's some other stuff I think. Okay, well, I mean. I don't think that changes much. It, it's kind of like some of them, they even say it's kind of like just affirming what we already do. So, I mean, I, I'd like to kind of walk through what some of those are because I think that's important. Um, but, but yeah, I think it's still not going to put to rest yet this question of, you know, what does it mean to be, you know, something that is a, a church that is, that closely identifies with, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Southern, ba you know, the Southern Baptist Convention. So uh, those are something that uh, that we we need to kind of work through. And I just don't think it's it's not uh, it's not done yet. I don't think it's going to be done um, just to kind of work through what we're, we're looking at. So to, to let me just read this. This comes from the SBC dot net website. It just talks about right now. Here is what it here's what it states to be in friendly cooperation, right? So this is that phrase. This is what it means to be in friendly cooperation with the Southern Baptist Convention. This is under our Constitution. It says the convention will deem uh, will only deem a church to be in friendly cooperation with the convention and sympathetic with its purposes and work, i.e., cooperating church that has the term used in the convention's governing documents, which. Number one, has a faith and practice that closely identifies with the convention's adopted statement of faith. 
By way of example, churches which acts to affirm, approve, or endorse homosexual behavior would be deemed not in cooperation with the convention. So obviously, number one means we closely identify with the convention's you know adopted state of faith. So that that's something that you know, and I know that some people have been nervous about when you say, uh, you know, how how much. Uh, does that mean like because it's, kind of, it's kind of still broad there? Here's another one. Number two has formally approved its intention uh, to cooperate with the Southern Baptist Convention by way of example. The regular filing of the annual report request by the convention would be uh, one indication of such cooperation. Number three has made undesignated financial contributions through the cooperative program, through the convention's executive committee for convention causes, or to any convention entity during the fiscal year preceding. Number four does not act in a manner inconsistent with the convention's belief regarding sexual abuse. Number five does not act to affirm, approve, or endorse discriminatory behavior on the basis of ethnicity. So those are four pieces of what it means to be uh, in friendly cooperation uh, and uh, you know and sympathetic uh, with the purposes and work of the convention. Right? Those are those are four pieces there. And so, you know, obviously it says that you need to closely identify. And so I, I, I was hoping that there might be some, that there might be a little bit more to it. Like that idea of like, what is it, how do I closely identify? Because once again, like Rick Warren had said, you know, we, we agree with everything except one word. Well, that one word is absolutely significant. And this didn't help clear some of that ambiguity. Um, but as as you read through the article, I'm looking at the Baptist Press one, uh, you know, it, it does say that as they kind of work through that, it says that that phrase closely identifies with it received a lot of scrutiny. Uh, Wellman admitted he was lukewarm to it and the ambiguity it brought. But by December, he had gone to come to love this phrase, calling it not perfect, perfect, but sufficient. Um, you know, and, and so I, I get it. I mean, it's tough because there there comes to that point that you have to say you know, that, and I guess there has to just be some honesty of this is who we are. This is what it says. Do we believe it? And, and, and I guess, and I'll say this and I'll kick it back to you, where I think it comes difficult for some people is there's, there's definitely a broadness to the Baptist faith and message where there's multiple kind of theological positions you can take on certain topics. Uh, and then there's some very much uh, you know, uh, it's I'm thinking of the other word, not broad, uh, a very narrowness to theological positions that there's not a lot of room for disagreement at all. And uh, and, and so, you know, that you have to be willing to to be there. And I think that to closely identify is you have to be in the narrow stuff uh, and the very specific things very much in line with that and with the broad stuff, be willing to say, yeah, we can agree that, you know, we're not going to disfellowship you over uh, you know, that you're not dispensational or whatnot. Like that's key differences in certain denominations. You know, if, if uh, like, in fact, one denomination I absolutely love, they wouldn't call themselves denominations, Calvary Chapel, you know, but, but I love Calvary Chapel, but I would never be able to be part of Calvary Chapel because Calvary Chapel is heavily dispensationalist. And I'm not a, I'm not a dispensationalist in, in the sense that they do. I'm still trying to figure out some of that stuff. Um, you know, and, uh, and so as much as I love those guys, I just know that those are the boundaries for them. And so it'd be disingenuous to, to be, if I was a pastor leading a church to say, Hey, we want to join you. We agree with most of everything, except, you know, a key thing for them. No, I, I'll love you guys and want to cooperate with you, but I'm not part of your group that way. So if you're Calvary Chapel, I love you. You guys are good. All right, Andrew, next, what do you got? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, th this committee seemed to be uh, almost a reactionary uh, approach to say, okay, we've got this law amendment that we we lost control over. Um, the, the platform did those kind of supposedly leading us. They're they're not leading us on this issue. The the, the messengers are saying we're not in a agreement. We want to we want to be very clear and very firm on this, at least as of uh, New Orleans. Um, so this idea of the cooperation group, a lot of people thought this was a poison pill, so to speak. And it looks like uh, there were some concerns, especially some of the people that composed the committee. Uh, I think one of them uh, that people have talked about, he's, he, their church is like completely pro-women pastors. Um, I, there's so much going on, I don't want to speak inaccurately, but I, be, I believe that accusation has been uh, made. 
And how is that person even allowed to uh, be part of the convention, uh, let alone on the committee? So there was a lot of concern that this is going to come out and they're going to find a way, even if the law amendment passed, to use this committee to kind of sidestep, so to speak, um, enforcement. So um, I, I think that's a really uh, crucial thing that people have been watching. Um, but then the question has come up. Well, what does it mean? Um, I, I'd like to recommend an article uh, by Colin Smothers. Uh, its uh, website is ChristOverall.com. Not a Freelance Club Identity Association and Confessionalism in the SBC, uh, a really great article. And he goes through kind of the use of that language, uh, even in the current Baptist Faith Message and, and prior iterations of the uh, BFM, to discuss that, that that phrase really is more about those who historically have identified themselves as Baptist, not about um, the percentage of the content in the confessional statement, yeah. that this is a statement for Southern Baptists. Uh, that that we have historically viewed ourselves in agreement with these things. And so to turn it then as a way of saying, but you can disagree with um, X number. You know, uh, Al Mohler had said that either every word of the confession matters, some words matter, or no words matter. And this is a, kind of a, a really great deal. Like once you say that, well, you can not care about this part of the uh, BFM, then how do you not just lose the whole thing? So I, I think that the idea of that cooperation approach was uh, probably, I think Trump had or sorry, Trump, if there was a negative impulse in this or a political impulse in this, I think it was almost defeated by looking at what that phrase has historically meant. Um, in fact, looking at um, the uh, BFM 63, this generation of Southern Baptists is in historic succession of intent and purposes as its endeavors to state for its time and theological climate, those articles of the Christian faith, which are most surely held among us. That was the language in the earlier uh, iteration, most surely held. Uh, it, it was changed to um, what we're dealing with uh, now with, with the idea of uh, closely identified. But the historical idea is that this is what composes us as Baptist historically. Uh, and so it's not a matter of, hey, get nine out of 10 of these articles and you're, you're Baptist enough. So I think that when you d dig into the history and the language that was chosen, it's not a caveat of all or nothing um, or a, a piece but rather the reason that we've come together and created a confessional statement is because generally this is what we have always believed. Mm. Um, and, and I think that the cooperation group then, uh, I'll say this, Al Mohler in an interview with uh, Denny Burke, dennyburke.com, uh, good interview here. He goes through and discusses with Al Mohler the, uh, his opinions on this, um, uh, sorry, um, uh, this is actually at almoller.com, but he has an interview with Denny Burke and he's opposed to this cooperation group. And he's opposed to the cooperation group because he, he just didn't see a positive side of it. Um, and I had the quote here in a second ago, but um, I, I'll just kind of summarize. Uh, his concern was if, we are, if we're not sure what cooperation is, you know, then how can this committee uh, make you know, positive recommendations? Um, but uh, what I was amazed at, because I was kind of following the, the general direction of where this committee was going, people were saying just a few months ago, go to the convention, vote yes for the law amendment, vote against everything recommended by the cooperation group. I mean, I, I followed people that flat out said that. Yeah. And uh, and then Al Mulder was one of, one of the first to say, the day that it was released, the SBC cooperation group has released its report, all recommendations presented unanimously. SBC should, SBC should be thankful. Very glad to see recommendations calling for trustees to affirm the BFM. So... That's how Al Mohler responded. And I'm like, well, this could be really interesting. Yeah. Because um, he had had said this. I realize this. I'm saying this in public. I opposed from the floor the idea of this motion in Anaheim. And I'm very perplexed about how this is going to turn out. So I have to, in honesty, wait and see. Uh, but before we even get there, as I said before, uh, the first time it was uh, appointed, I said, look, there are only really three options here. Every word is important. No words are important or, or some are. Uh, so uh, I don't know how in the world you would say, here's our confession of faith, but we mean some of this. We don't really mean other parts of it, certainly in terms of our cooperation. Yeah. So um, so I was kind of uh, waiting for some of the buzz to come about where people are saying, no, 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 there's 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 something here. Uh, but generally, I think we could go through it now. I, I'm I'm kind of generally pleased with what they've come up with. I think it's Yo, kind of a I honor. No, absolutely. I I think I think you got to give them credit where credit's due. And and I do think, yeah, I think that especially in Anaheim, there was definitely a fear that um, that this was meant to 
that this was going to create more confusion, right? So, so here's one. The first recommendation I think is absolutely 100%. It, it must be, yeah. Recommendation one, addresses how edits or amendments are be made to the Baptist faith and message. Last summer in New Orleans, an amendment to the Baptist faith and message basically rolled through with a vote uh, with little discussion, prompting concerns about how this came to be. So essentially, if you're going to make, uh, in order to like change the bylaws, you have to have a uh, two thirds vote in two consecutive years to make this happen. Uh, and now they're, they're saying that we should do that with the Baptist faith in message as well. And that of course comes from the fact that last year from the floor, we amended the Baptist faith and message and it wasn't a bad amendment. It's actually, I, I think it's a helpful amendment, but it was like, crud, if we could do it that quickly with that, imagine how bad it could be if we just made edits like that all the time. And essentially it was just saying, hey, we're going to call the pastor elder overseer, uh, you know, and just kind of clarify what we mean by pastor. In, and that's in the Baptist faith and message now. Um, but now they're saying anything like that, we should say, let's give it two years just like that. And I think that's totally fine. You shouldn't be able to make full votes and full full changes to our confession of faith that takes uh, takes a long time to work through that and to to clarify that and you don't want to touch that generally a lot and redefine things so i like that i think that's a that's a good one um it, because they say that also ties to this because it is the significant piece of what it means to be in friendly cooperation, right? So because that's a sub significant thing of what it means to be a Baptist, we don't want that thing to be changed on the fly anytime you want to. So we need to protect that. All right, what's re recommendation two? Yeah, um, well, just, just on recommendation one, all of us are uh, in agreement. Uh, all of us were shocked to be able to make that change from the floor. And there is a danger with our polity as messengers is that there there is a certain, in my mind, weakness that you could really stir up the messengers in a year and you kind of get a mob movement. And so yeah. for major decisions, it's best to have a large majority and time. And uh, so this is going to make sure that, uh, you know, I, I, one of the things about the messengers proposing that we have an investigation and waive attorney client privilege, uh, that was a huge deal. And then we're still reeling from some of the uh, fallout of waiving attorney client privilege. I'm not so sure that the messengers, um, would make the same vote now. Maybe they would. Uh, and that's where having um, space for major decisions. And of course, now people are going to yeah. hate me for where I just said, but um, <laughs> there, there, it helps uh, the law of unintended consequences. Um, and so, yeah, every one of us uh, left that convention saying, well, we're happy with the vote, but we wouldn't want to see that happen again because you stir people up and you make a vote in another direction. And then, and then you find out things. Uh, so a, a full year will pass with the law amendment for the constitution and there's been a good number of articles written on both sides of why we should support, why we should reject. And the best interests have had time to kind of digest that and we'll approach Indianapolis with that in mind. So this is a good one. I think everyone, will, I think this will pass almost unanimously. Um, yeah, I think so too. Um, so um, number two, to ensure that the sole authority for seating messengers is vested in the messenger body. Uh, so we recommend that the executive committee propose changes to our governing documents for the convention's consideration uh, at the coming meeting. Uh, we celebrate. They, they also recommend a celebration of seating messengers from a church for the first time. Uh, I might be on a different article than you, but I think that I see that they, too. There, they celebrate. It, it all worked. Absolutely, yeah, I see that. Yeah. So the I think right now the way things work is that the um, the there's now a standing credentials committee as a result of changes in the recent history, and I think they're making referrals to the executive committee about seating messengers. And rather than have that process, uh, it's going to go straight from the credentials right to the floor. And, and bypass uh, that level of bureaucracy. Um, I think that this is generally good. I, I don't think um, there's anything um, too negative to worry about here. Uh, you know, unless there's an idea that the messenger body would be less inclined to not seat people from X church um, versus the credentials or executive committee. But I think what we're seeing is the credentials committee and executive committee have actually been on the opposite side of the messengers in the in the last couple of conventions. So I think this is a better solution anyway. That that keeps them from having to make a recommendation for or against. Yeah. And let the messengers decide. Yes, that's what I was trying to think, to clarify. So if if I'm reading this correctly, that churches that we will say will not are not in friendly cooperation, those would just come to the floor saying, hey. Do we, these are the names, kind of like, I guess I would say is if you have your business meeting set up to where people who have asked, now granted this is people who have asked to go inactive or to leave the fellowship, 
then those go before the floor and you vote whether or not we do that. Same thing in the sense of these churches have been deemed out of, uh, you know, uh, friendly fellowship. And so we need the church, we need the convention to vote to, to in the same way, like you guys did that. We did it last year. There were a few different churches that were voted on. Right. The only problem is how big is that going to be? You know, if, 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 if that's happening that way now, so that, that could be kind of wild. It, it could be, there could be a lot of churches, you know, but I, I'm assuming that this is not something that has happened. I think most people are taking themselves out uh, when they no longer align and not forcing the convention right. to try to kick them out. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think that that's the big deal here is that you have plenty of churches who don't agree with this. And we're not saying that you're heretical and that what you're teaching is um, so egregious that it, it's no longer Christian. We're just saying that we think that there's a hermeneutical biblical approach here that is out of alignment with historic Baptist teaching. So go do what Christ has called you to do outside of our umbrella. Um, but we're not, you know, condemning uh, they aren't becoming cults, right? We're not, yeah. we're not saying that this is egregious sin. It, it, it's just a, it's a, an interpretation we believe is inaccurate. And uh, we think there is a slippery slope, uh, many of us on the side of the law amendment. I think the fear of the law amendment is that it will really press the requirement of this so starkly that the, the biggest fear, I think, from uh, some of the leadership in the SBC is that we don't want to spend the whole first day of the convention just excommunicating messengers. And I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think most people will self- uh, vacate oh, I, or just retitle. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Because you and I both know, on the other end of this, this is such a big issue that churches are already doing this. I know that even two years ago, talking to people in leadership, that in one single day, one guy, one church would call and say, "We're leaving you," you know, in this convention because you guys are too liberal. The next hour, a different phone call saying, "We're leaving because you guys aren't, uh, you guys aren't conservative, and, and are, uh, that you're 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 too conservative, right?" And so people are saying because because of this issue, churches are disfellowshipping themselves, like they're walking. Walking away now. One thing I you brought up, which I think is helpful, is some of the language that they want to use. That I'm going to skip to recommendation four. Uh, part of what they say is they want to say you know, we want to take the, that idea of the, not disfellowshipping, um, because it's not like we're saying it says that we want to. We, there's going to be an addendum, right, for clarification. Disfellowshipping is not the idea that we're saying like you're excommunicated, you're done with us. Uh, that no, we we want to. Uh, we want to use terminology that just uh, firmly says that, like, hey, you know, you are you you're not with us, but it's not like you're you're out. Like we recognize that you're just not part of our fellowship, right? That that you're not in cooperation with us, and so they would use a different term. Is what they would say, uh, and, and so that's that's kind of where they want to go with that too. I think that's helpful, is because at the end of the day, when we break on things, I think there will be times where you could say, "Yeah, we want to break with you completely because you're absolutely there's nothing that we have in common. We're not even Christian, right? In that regard, you could say that there might be signs, signs that, but largely some of this stuff you could just say, "Yeah." Yeah, no, we're, 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 we, this is what we're not saying is that you are not Christian. We're saying that this is just not Baptist, right? There's some significant differences that we share and what it means to specifically to be a Southern Baptist. Uh, that, uh, that, that's why we are holding the line in which we are. So that comes, I'll skip to recommendation four. It just says that they want to clarify our cooperative unity by evaluating the usefulness and accuracy of a public list. And that comes down to, right, the idea that uh, the list that we have of, of churches, that there would be a, a, a clear list and kind of a, an updated list that would be, here is part of who is a Southern Baptist church, because I guess that there were people that they were brought up to be, uh, <laughs> it said, um, as you're reading this line, previous cases were brought up where churches were recommended to be no longer in friendly cooperation. And when contacted, were surprised they had any connection to the SBC, right? And so, yeah, that that's important, right, is having a, a real list. And let's see, a lot of this, by the way, is just like, it's the same, it's a lot of these issues are the same things that happen in the local church. You have this membership list that is absolutely insane. I always love going to you know convention meetings. You look at like there's a that church down the road has a thousand people in it, and then you know that church. There's a hundred people that attend there, and you're like yeah. a thousand people aren't there. Where are all those members? 
Well, they some of them probably wouldn't even consider that most of them probably don't even consider themselves members anymore. Uh, they just walked away. And that's important, right, is to kind of have a clear picture of what churches are actually still part of the convention. Um, so I, I think that's a good point as well. Yeah. And, and I think that if there is a sticky point, if there is a, an issue that could be buried somewhere, I think it would be in recommendation four. Uh, you know, if, if we don't have lists anymore, or if we just decide not to publish this, then maybe it would be harder um, to try to pursue um, disfellowshipping or, or viewing churches in unfriendly uh, fellowship. Um, I don't know yet. You know, we'll, we'll kind of have to see. But this this is not a recommendation to really um, do anything other than have the exec executive committee study the the accuracy and usefulness. So I, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, messengers need to be prepared that depending on what's recommended, there might be something important to to view on that. But as of right now, it's, it's simply a recommendation. Uh, so um, yeah, and I and I agree. Uh, if it's not accurate, it's not helpful. And um, I, I do think there is a usefulness to it if it's accurate. Uh, yeah, so absolutely. Uh, so recommendation three, then is that where we're going to finish up let's finish up a recommendation you got to have four to get to three that's what you, there you go so, yeah there you go so let's look at three all right only those candidates who affirm the convention's adopted statement of faith um uh, uh will be seated uh i read this wrong as entity trustees or a standing committee member so basically the committee on nominations uh would only be able to nominate candidates who affirm the baptist faith message and this is where uh, Al Mohler really praised this on Twitter when it came out, you know, that SBC should be thankful. Very glad to see recommendations calling for trustees to affirm the BFM. Yeah. So really, I thought the cooperation committee came out and hit a home run on this one. You know, wh whatever we decide churches, uh, what leeway they have, trustees don't have that leeway. If you're going to serve as a trustee, you're going to affirm all of it. Um, yeah. that, that's what I'm reading here. And I think that is fabulous uh, because you are representing all SBC uh, members on any of these entities or standing committees. And so therefore, just like SBC employees need to affirm it, SBC trustees should have to affirm it. Um, I'm kind of surprised they didn't have to already. You know, if that's not a requirement, I'm really glad. It's true. So uh, I think recommendation one and three are fabulous. I think recommendation two is probably helpful. Um, it also, you know, recommendation two, not involving the executive committee uh, as much, takes a little pressure off the executive committee, which has had a lot of negative stuff um just uh they've, they've been up against a lot the last several years so i think that helps uh that as well insulates the executive committee credentials committee handles it brings it to the floor and then recommendation four i think we just need to watch obviously if yeah. if we don't have an accurate list yeah it needs to be looked yeah. at so um well, as of now i'm happy here's a thought that i had okay so help me with this this is my thing recommendation calls for a rec requirement of the committee of nominations to nominate only those candidates who affirm the convention's adopted statement of faith how does that differ from asking a church to be in close alignment to say, do you, uh, do, you know, do you affirm the adopted statement of faith? Like, why would that not be what we ask of every church that is commits to be Southern Baptist? Now, maybe. Now, let me ask you this: Does that? Does that? Is that where the rub is? Also, would you want to read into that? Because you know, you are, you know, you are. Uh, you would know this world a little bit more than me of like, you know, you, you obviously have ch Baptist churches that are Baptist churches that say, Hey, we're SBC. We're not Baptist faith and message 2000. Uh, we're, we're the previous edition Baptist, but we're still SBC. Uh, you know, that's like what we see with BGCT uh, and SBTC, yeah. you know, that kind of a thing. Is, is that yeah. why is that we're saying that? No, if you're a trustee, you got to be 2000. Baptist faith and message, but churches can they the reason they wouldn't say that is because they're still keeping a broadness that like you can like the old version too. Well, I think it's the top down versus bottom up uh, approach of Baptist. So if, if you're going to represent the whole convention on a committee or trustee board, then you've got to share the the general statement, which is the the Baptist faith and message. If you're a local congregation, we don't have authority over you, and so yeah. we have never kind of gone over every church and say, did you adopt the 2000, you know, we, yeah. we've let churches basically say, we want to be a part of y'all and we generally agree with y'all. And, yeah. and so we haven't um, really policed it that hard. I see what you're um, saying. And so I don't think that we really want to police it that hard. That That's the, most of the people who are against the law amendment are in agreement with the language of the law amendment. They're just, they don't want to become 
that uh, they don't want to police it. They, they don't want to have to do this. And they're a little concerned about how many churches we, we could lose over it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, but the, and then there is a group that really wants to move in an egalitarian way, but that's a small, small group in the SBC. Most of them are, are afraid of, of losing a thousand, 2000 churches, uh, maybe more. So um, that that's the bigger fear of the law amendment, I, I think. Um, but it's that top down. Uh, we, we don't want to have, the national SBC say, this is what you all have to believe or else you're out. Yeah. Um, what has come up with this women in ministry thing is it's not a matter of, uh, we generally agree. It's you're, you're contradicting the statement. Yeah. Uh, and and that's a little bit different than just kind of saying, you know, I don't emphasize this aspect all that much. I don't, you know, uh, and we don't have to necessarily have a, a whole ordination council type thing set up by the credential committee for every church that wants to apply. Although our associations do do that. Um, to bring churches in. So we we have a process for that. And, and so I think that's why, though, I, I think, and I was, I'm on the credential committee for our association, and we use the Baptist faith and message as the interrogation of the church, you know, how are yeah. we on this? So um, I just, I just think the, the reflex uh, against it, is, it has to do with the historical um, uh, opposition to a top-down enforcement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, hey, you know, that's been helpful. I appreciate you answering that because that is some, one of those things of like, yeah, I get that, like across that level. But then it's, I guess, yeah, it's not as simple uh, of saying that for the Baptist convention as a whole, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm, so I'm glad, like all the four of those, dude, I'm, I'm fine. I, I like those. I think those are worth, uh, I think those guys who did the job, great job on that. Um, so. And and no, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that, that uh, as we're going into uh, we're going into the convention season pretty soon, this is a pretty it's a pretty it it should be pretty non uh, what's the word I'm thinking of shouldn't be that that big of a deal controversial to do some of this stuff. So uh, good job on that, guys who are part of that. I, actually, I know one of my buddies uh, in there, uh, Victor Chaisa Rissabon from uh, First Southern Baptist Church of Anaheim. Victor, you probably are not watching this at all, but I love you, man. Victor's like, I got my first, he was, I swear I did my first, uh, what did I do? Like my first um, intern job. I did my first intern job for your know, church worlds, part of the seminary stuff with Victor. So good job, Victor. And uh, the rest of you got, well, there were some more people in there than besides, look, look at who's on that board, by the way. If you just look at the name, the members here, Victor Charles Rissabon. Here's some other names of note. Uh, Richard Land was in there. Um, let's see. Uh, Trevin Wax was in there. Uh, you know, and so there, there's some, there's some, uh, yeah. some, some big names on there. So, and I think Bar Barbara appointed the committee, if I recall. And uh, you know, generally, the, the reality is we're so much more united than the world wants us to be. Uh, yeah. the, the Baptist. Uh, they're, they're, we're passionate. We, you know, we make the press because we're the largest uh, evangelical denomination in America. Um, I think, I think in the world, um, Anglicans and us go back and forth a little bit, but uh, th the reality is that th this is such a, a good statement, uh, unanimous on the committee, you know, that it shows how we can agree on things. I think that's really great. Uh, I'd be watchful, you know, to keep, see if anything shifts between now and the, when these are actually uh, recommended from the floor and how they speak to them might give some insight if there is a, uh, a Trojan horse. Uh, right now, I'm not seeing it. And yeah. uh, it's just really refreshing. The law amendment will pass or it won't. But if it doesn't pass, it's because the messengers are satisfied that we are enforcing our conventional statements without a constitutional um, support. Yeah. Uh, and, and an additional support. We, we ex excommunicated churches or we disfellowed. Sorry. We just said we don't want to use that language. We are not in friendly cooperation with churches. And we voted to separate that friendship uh, with in the umbrella of the SBC without the law amendment. Um, I think the law amendment brings some clarity that I think is helpful in light of the times. Um, yeah. And so that, that's kind of where I'm on that, but uh, it is nice. Uh, I'm not going to hate the SBC if that fails. I, I, I think I'd like to see it pass, but the truth is I think this really tough five year reign uh, <laughs> run is coming to an end and we might have a, a peaceful uh, period here. I hope. <laughs> Let's hope. I think, I think there's some good stuff on the horizon for sure. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I like what I see with the candidates they're coming out to. I, I love the fact that we've got Jeff Orge uh, in uh, now. And uh, so, no, I'm, I'm, um, 
I'm, I think, I think there's some good stuff coming. And so I'm excited for convention and, uh, no, I, it, this is all good stuff. So hope if you guys are part of Baptist churches, I think that there's, there's good stuff to come, uh, come June. And, and if uh, you're coming to Indianapolis, come see Dr. Ben Pate and Dr. Andrew Marquez. Well, should we, we should film, get an OCXNT film. booth. We got, we yeah. should, we're going to film off to the, the side. We're going to put, uh, bring two convention chairs together and make it look like we've got our own setup, but we're going to, we'll, we'll film live there together. We should, if we, we can get some Wi-Fi, we should do that. That'd be, we should, be we will, we will not miss a day. You know, we might okay. miss a day when we're at our offices and we have Wi-Fi, but we will not miss it in convention. So, very cool. all right, well, that's all I got, man. I'm finished. All right. I think it was a good one. You want to close us out? I would love to close us out. So uh, let me, let's finish up and uh, with the prayer, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look with favor on you and give you peace. All right. Hey, thanks for listening, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.